Tamarind. Edward. Welcome to the podcast. Wow, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Yeah? Well, yeah. why are you doing good? Um, well, I guess we'll dive into this a little bit, but um, recently I've had some life changes and it's just been a catalyst for reminding me the importance of working on yourself and feeling grounded within yourself. So I guess I've just put a lot more time and energy into that and I've been able to fill my cup a lot more, which has now overflowed into other areas of my life, which I'm grateful for. Awesome. I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I'm tempted just to dive straight into this. Do it. Why not? Um, so would you be open to sharing like what's what's been happening in your life? What are some of the the life the life changes? Uh, yeah. So um, I guess rip the bandaid off. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't really. There's no other way to it. do it. <laughs> uh, so recently, <clears throat> Ant and I um, decided that we probably weren't the right people for each other. And it was on very amicable terms and we had lots of great conversations about it. And that I think is something that I am extremely appreciative of was our ability to open up with each other and be completely transparent and vulnerable and honest to the point where it's like, this isn't a nice decision to make, but it's the right decision mm. and giving each other the freedom to experience life in a way that would be better for ourselves and for each other. So yeah, that is the new situation of my life that I'm navigating. And because of that, it's like, you know, I, in a way, there were other elements, but moved to an entirely new country to be with someone. And work, obviously, is a huge part of that. Um, we work, we train, you know, we live together. And now it's like, okay, I have to find my footing in a place that wasn't my home originally. Um, so, yeah, it's just navigating the new chapter of life like looking for new apartments and figuring out you know what is life now um which is extremely exciting at the same time you know i think a lot of my reflections have just been that through any hardship that i've experienced or any time that i've had to grieve or go through pain there's always been something better on the other side um, and I'm not speaking from a relationship perspective. I'm just talking about opportunities in life and, you know, the avenues that happen after that. And I keep reminding myself that the best is yet to come because really, as I get older, I feel like every year just keeps getting better. I know myself more. I know what I want more. I surround my pe myself with people who I want to spend more time with and things just feel really great. Um, you know, something that I was just journaling straight before this. So it's like very easy to <clears> speak because it's fresh on my mind. But, you know, I've been reading this book that Liam recommended. And honestly, if you haven't read it yet and you are on some sort of self-discovery path, I would highly recommend it. It's so great that I can't think of the name right now. But <laughs> I was going to say. Um, <laughs> it is uh, The Practice out? of Groundedness. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he's reading it at the moment as well, We're right? both reading it together, nice. yeah. We, we decided, well, I decided I'd like to read it with him so we can have like chats about it. And one of the things and one of the topics that it spoke about yesterday when I was walking home was talking about, are you bringing your um, backstage self to the front stage? And something that I feel like I'm doing really well at the moment in life, it's obviously speaking about authenticity is bringing that self forward and that is why life has felt so much easier and um i guess like peaceful i'm spending time and energy on the things that matter rather than trying to put up a facade so can you can you explain that concept bringing your backstage self to the world yeah absolutely so i think sometimes as people just in general we are constantly trying to i don't know i guess like in a way prove ourselves to people around us and be liked be liked exactly and that comes from external validation um whether that be through social media or the way that we act with the people that we're with you know being chameleons in different situations trying to fit in um all of that is perhaps not a true reflection of how you really are and the person that is beneath that and the person that you'd be when you're by yourself or when perhaps you're with like your best friends or your parents or your family, like that's the self that should be on every stage. And yeah, I think that's kind of the idea. What, what, how would you describe it? Sorry. Yeah, no, I would say that's, yeah, I always love that using the analogy of the person you're looking at in front of the mirror and the person that you're showing to the world. Mm. And then I don't know where I got this from, but I always re vividly remember this, like this metaphorical image of your two fists mm. 
Mm. And one fist is the face that you look in, that you see in the mirror every single day at home. Yeah. And the other is a face that you bring out to the world. Yeah. And an authenticity is the question of how far are those two fists from each other. Yeah. And, um, you know, if, there's, if they're a long way apart, well, then yeah. you've got well, a long like, way to go. Yeah. How coherent is my identity? Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. I think another that's not the only way to explain authenticity because a lot of people when they look at themselves in the mirror still don't know who they mm. are you know they're mm. still in their own journeys and figuring out and i i can resonate with this myself but you're not knowing if the person that you're bringing to the world is you or is the person you see at home you yeah you know what i mean it's like yeah. sometimes you're not really sure which one is authentically you yeah. and i just for me it was just experience and asking that question over and over again mm. to you know which has led me to finally being the most authentic version of myself now but yeah you know there's still things i battle with for sure which is why i was going to ask you mm. what i was going to ask you sorry which is you know in reading that you know that the idea of the backstage self bringing that to the front to the front of the world yeah um you know what aspects of you do you did you notice or do you feel like you're still struggling to show the true you is there, is there any parts of you that you're still trying to trying mm. to figure out in that sense or are there, there are the moments certain situations people certain people that you're around yeah. um, environments where you feel like you feel you bring another version of you yeah um i think over the years that's lessened but it doesn't mean that it's not something that resurfaces and it's obviously quite easy to forget a practice because i think that authenticity in itself is a practice mm -hmm. to continue to do and sometimes you get sucked into being a certain way or yeah you just forget um i guess for me yeah, it's difficult. I mean, in a way, not in a bad way. My job requires me to sometimes put my backstage self away mm. because I have a job to do and it wouldn't be appropriate at the time to necessarily bring my front stage person into that mm. in every moment. So I know not really the way that you're asking it, but that would be That's one. That's true. No, me, me too. Um, I think another one would be... Yeah, I don't know. I guess like for me, sometimes being in bigger social groups or situations where I'm a little bit less comfortable, um, I probably withdraw a little bit or try too hard and mm. try to like fill the silences, which I think I'm getting better <clears throat> at, but it's still something that I'm working on and still something that I get quite nervous for. Um, but it's kind of like exposure therapy. I just need to keep putting myself out there and keep being myself because... The more that I'm doing that, the more that I'm attracting people that I want to hang around with. So that's been cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the only thing I can think of, and this is just me being completely honest, is like I've always been probably a little bit sure of my own sexual my own sexuality, my sexuality. Hmm. And it's something that I guess I don't know if I would bring forward all the time uh, because I'm unsure of it. So then it's like, I, is that what I am like? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I can't really think of many scenarios where I am not bringing my backstage self forward. Yeah. Um, which is nice to say. It's great. I think if you had asked me that like a year and a half to two years ago, it would have been a completely different answer. Um, I think, yeah, so many times in life I've just not realized how much I was trying to please the people around me. But it wasn't that... I was consciously doing it. It was just like you naturally become a chameleon in those situations and you naturally just find yourself going with the flow and eventually the flow runs out because it then feels ingenuine. Mm. And that's when you're like, oh shit, I haven't been being myself this whole time or friendships fade. I feel like the people that you genuinely connect with and you have like an authentic connection with that stuff doesn't really fade because you're on the same page and you connect by the same deeper core values yeah and it feels effortless yeah <clears throat> I, can, I think authenticity is, is easy yeah and 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 the opposite to that is hard yeah you know because there's always these micro these these decisions you're making every microsecond about what to say next or how to act next and that yeah. is extremely fatiguing right and it's mm -hmm. you're really not present as well i always notice that you know when you're in those moments yeah. where you're not bringing your authentic self forward 
you're so caught up in another world yeah. of like, what are people thinking about me? What do I look like right now? What should I say? What should I do? Yeah. Is that the right thing to say? Is that not the right? Mm. And it's just exhausting. And I, I've talked about this so many times on a podcast, but I think I spent so much of my life existing in that space. Um, mm. And like you said, just, just doing it like not to, to do it, doing it doesn't fix it. Mm. Um, but it starts with awareness and then knowing what, that is and what what authenticity yeah. is and then yeah and then yeah have your own light bulb moment and then like you said just constant trial and error examination assessment repeat yeah. repeat repeat no exactly i think as well like one of the things that i can think of from this book specifically is it speaks about acknowledging and showing your humanness is actually what brings people in to do the same it creates mm. a space for people to be vulnerable and to be themselves because it shows that this person's human and they're quirky and they're weird but it's our differences that make us perfect um, I really like that. And then it also like was speaking about how it was saying that vulnerability doesn't happen because of trust. Trust happens because of vulnerability. Yeah. And that was really cool. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that. Um, so what have been some of the revelations for you recently, you know, in the wake of breakup yeah. and, and yeah. you know, being in a not very, in a bit of a low spot yeah. for a bit. And then, I mean, I, I witnessed your turnaround in a really short amount of time and that's not to yes. discredit no. how hard you know, the breakup was. Um, but I think it's more testament to the way mm. that you handled it. Mm. Uh, because I've seen you go through many tough times and I've, you know, throughout the last four years, um, mm. I'm seeing your rebound times become shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And this yeah. like probably being one of the biggest life interventions, almost or the fastest rebound, which I was kind of like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and then we talked about it on the Monday and I was like, and we had a meet, I think we had a meeting. It was you like Saturday. Had, yeah. You had had a, <laughs> pretty much a breakdown on saturday yep and you know you know we'd spoken over the phone and said let's 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 catch up in person on monday let's not do this over over a whatsapp call yeah and i was fully bracing for you know the tamarind that i knew might come in that day and you were just you were really good yeah. and you would had so much perspective and you acknowledged yeah. you know where you were just a couple of days ago and i was kind of like holy shit i did not i was did not expect that and it was really bad it, it was it was, not, it was nice <laughs> i mean i was fully ready to to give you the shoulder and be there for you but i was like fuck she didn't, she didn't need me she's got this shit but so tell me yeah. like what you know what were some of the revelations that that came out of this of this life experience yeah um no i think okay exactly what you've said just then is so true um you know i think emotional flexibility and understanding your emotions is something that requires continual practice and training. And it's the same as like training a muscle group. Like the more you train it, the better you're able to recover, the faster you can recover. And for me, one of the greatest moments was like, whoa, <laughs> really hit a low patch. But I think I was just going through a lot of the stages of grief, right? right? Like I had been in a position where I was like, this is reality is hit. Like I've been looking for apartments, like, you know, nowhere kind of felt like home at the time. Like I just felt quite, lost in a way um and i was just allowing myself to feel my emotions i think sometimes for me i am such a logical thinker that i sometimes suppress the emotion and just think with logic and that doesn't work through the emotion so this time around i was like okay if i had a baby like i'm not gonna just tell it to shut the fuck up like i'm gonna let it just cry or like comfort it and that's what i did for myself and because of that i got to just have moments where it was like get it all out i've been journaling very consistently um like you know i don't know sometimes i feel like sometimes people feel like they judge themselves for the stuff that they put in their journal mm. but like i am laying it out there like i'll put it there and i'm like yeah i mean i have that thought and it's not, i'm not proud of it but mm. this is what i was thinking and because of that it was kind of like i was able to read back and be like oh my god like that's just emotion talking like it's not it's not real life where are you actually and like how do you actually feel and like how can you move forward from this and it just brought about a perspective of acceptance i think i've just realized so much how important it is to just control what i can control and a lot of that is to do with myself and how i perceive things and the change that had happened within that weekend was pivotal because i think that was the moment where i'd been like okay like yes, this is shit. And yes, this is hard, but I know it's for the right reasons. I know that this is going to be good. Eventually every single time I've gone through something, it becomes better. So now what am I going to do 
right now to take steps forward to that better self and to that better moment because thinking about this or dwelling on the past or thinking too far into the future is not helping so today is what I'm looking at and I'm just going to take it a step at a time um so yeah some of the biggest realizations through this and I'm I'm not grateful for all of the pain that I've been through but I am grateful for the experience and the reminders and the lessons that I've been retaught um was just how important it is to feed into myself um you know last year towards the beginning of the year I had spent so much time learning to love myself and learning to give myself self-compassion and just putting a lot more time into reading and listening to podcasts and speaking just connecting with people and through that was like the happiest and the most fulfilled that I've ever felt like it was the first time ever where I was like, wow, the place that I am is home. I'm no longer running away from myself. I've accepted myself for who I am and what I am. And I have great things to offer. And the world has great things to offer. And I just saw things in such a positive light. And recently I hadn't had that. And it wasn't the breakup. Like that wasn't what was happening. Like I had a job that I loved. I have a partner that I obviously still, I, I still love Ant. And, you know, I had great friends around me. I had a lot going for me, but I just didn't feel the same as what I had felt last year. And I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't, I didn't understand why until now this catalyst for reflecting and journaling and becoming more grounded has just reminded me that, oh, okay, I got given a new role at work, which has been incredible and I'm super grateful for it. But I really like threw all my eggs in one basket and just chased excellence and chased performance. And in that chase and that desire to be, you know, incredible at what I was doing, I forgot about myself and forgetting about myself meant that work just felt harder. Connection felt harder. Relationships felt harder. Like everything around me was feeling hard. And that's why I wasn't feeling fulfilled in what I was doing. And now I'm like, oh, I can recreate the same feeling. Like this is a moment where it's like, take a step back so you can keep taking steps forward. Take time to yourself. Make sure you're continuing to journal. Like I'm not the kind of person that journals necessarily every day. It's like, it is sometimes sporadic. It is sometimes more often, sometimes less. And that's, I'm not going to put a rule in it. Like it, I, I'm, I'm me and whatever feels good for me is good. But at the same time, it was a reminder that even when things are good, Tammy, you should still do that stuff mm. because it's very easy to do it when things aren't good, but highlight the good shit that's happening in your life as well. And then you have, you know, reading back, I don't know if you read back through your stuff, but I love reading back through my reflections because it just shows how different your perspective can be and the way that you talk and the language that you use. And yet the world around you is not actually changing. It's just your perspective. Yeah. It's just the lens that we have. And it reminds me that I have the ability and I'm in control of changing that lens if I'm willing to work for it. Um, so yeah, biggest takeaway, long story short, <laughs> was- But a great story. Yeah, was <clears throat> just how important it is to continue to work on me and that will then carry forward into the rest of my life. Awesome. Mm. But when you started that, that long story, um, the first thing I wanted to say was like how under- how undervalued rereading your journal is mm. um so i do it i didn't do it for years like i just would do a five minute journal or some form of journal entry and never read it back because i thought and i mean to be honest just the process of writing something down is already great yeah right and it's an amazing first step so i'm not discredit discrediting that and sometimes that's all you need mm. um but <clears throat> with the journal i'm using right now there is a weekly entry that you do. So you know every week you tally up every single day. So you kind of, you, you have a tangible score mm. out of 20, like we do with the process for our online athletes. Um, and then at the end of your week, you add all those up. So you have like a number, which basically the higher the number, the better your, your day was or the mm. week was. And then so you can kind of look from a week by week basis because it has all your weeks stacked up. And then it has a chance for you to reflect on the whole week. And so I'll go back through every day from Monday to Sunday yeah. and just reread through and pick out the main highlights or well, the main wins or the main struggles mm. and jot them down on the weekly thing. And and I think the last, not this week, but the two weeks before that, when I was in Colombia and traveling, I didn't do it because I was just jet lagged and I just, I would normally do it at night time and I just didn't have the energy to do it. And so I just forgot about that basically. Mm. And then doing it again this weekend, just gone. I was like, oh my God, like I, I have to do this 
this is like the the really powerful part of the journaling, the summary of the week. And it's amazing how, yeah, in the moment, you just lose perspective of everything. Like, you mm. know, a shitty day can make your life feel shit. At the same time, a great day can make, make your life feel great. And we were talking about yeah. the other day, right? Just how quickly perspective can change yeah. in, a, in a moment, in a second. Mm. And then just having that something to pull you back out and zoom out a little bit to look at the bigger picture yeah. is so powerful. Yeah, well, I think that you know, not even just the reflecting and looking back, but something that for me personally, I find with journaling or reflective thinking is it's a case of presence. And I feel like we're our best selves when we're present on the task at hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of like your flow state. Um, again, I have been reading a lot of books recently and there's another one called Designing Your Life, which I really like. And it got me to do an exercise where you for a week or two weeks, whatever you want, list out all the activities that you do in a day. And you have these like scoring systems where it's kind of like the meter on a car. So if you were to think of like super slow all the way up to like max effort or like an empty full tank, mm. whatever. So uh, one of them is engagement and then the other one is energy. So you can have activities throughout your day that you're like, you're super engaged, but at the same time, those things can actually be draining your battery. Mm. And it gave me a really good perspective of like each day, how I'm spending my time how much I probably am like really enjoying and engaged in those things, but the balance was off because my energy was like being drained by a lot of things. So for example, yeah, I was going to ask for some examples. Yeah. For example, if I am a little bit more tired and run down or emotionally drained, the length at which I can go on like a hike or a walk or something that is relatively strenuous and it's like hot and sunny at the moment, uh, my tolerance and the energy levels I get from that, uh, way less in a moment where I'm not feeling as good. So although getting out in nature is important to me, I need to be smart about the choices that I'm making for perhaps the distance or where I'm going, or if there's portions of that, that I can like sit down and just rest and chill. Right. Then things like journaling on a day where I feel really crap and I feel like I don't want to do it. And I feel like I have no energy to like, you know, I said this to Al the other day, I was like, my cooking, I like to cook and I like to eat. You guys know that. I was like, my cooking's been real uninspired. And he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, there's been days where I've like eaten oats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, <laughs> I was just like, it's just easy. So even on those days where like I can't be asked to do anything with my cooking or do much, I've forced myself to sit down and write. And then as the activity, that was the thing that like energy through the roof after because mm. it's just that processing, right? Like it's just so important. So, yeah. Pretty much, I'm just. Were, like, were there any? Know. Were there any consistencies? Um, how long did you do that whole meter thing for? I did it for two weeks. Was there any consistencies, like activities that were in your every day that yep. were like draining your energy? Yeah, for sure. So, um, for me, um, I had the f engagement was high for something like uh, reposting stuff on social media um, and doing anything on social media in general like my engagement's high but it really drains my energy so but with engagement is that like presence like how yeah, presence okay, like right. how focused like into it focus like how yeah, yeah like are you excited to be doing it yeah. kind of like how engaged are you in the activity or do i feel distracted by other stuff around me it's like mm. i my attention's on it so i'm not talking about social media like scrolling through social media for the sake of it it yeah. was like doing creating creating posting. stuff yeah and posting yeah. stuff making things so i find it like fun but at the same time, it really drains my energy. Same thing for like house hunting. Like I well, God. literally like, I, that shit. Oh, I loved it. You love I, like, it? Oh, I can't stand it. I think it's because I'm so like meticulous about stuff. So I was just like, I just hey. see one. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> How much? So yeah, I'll take many. it. <laughs> <laughs> I am not like that. Um, no, but I've like found it really cool. Cause I think for me, it, something I was worried about that was that I wouldn't find somewhere because now that I've moved out it means that i'm gonna have a place by myself in hong kong for those of you who don't live here it is a very expensive city so now that i'm going to be taking on the load by myself and i'm not the kind of person to have a roommate i wish that i could say like yeah i'll just go live with someone no thank yeah. you so it just means like the quality of life was going to be a bit of a step down i knew that but i was like how far is the step down and i think the more that i looked it was like oh there is hope like mm. there is possibility and yeah. So anyway, the apartment stuff was super engaged, but again, energy super low. So actually the consistency wasn't necessarily the activity itself. It was being on screens for a long period of time mm. 
is what makes me feel drained. Cause that's the same with like, if I'm programming a lot or doing a lot of stuff, like yep. just mentally, I'm just super, super fatigued by the end of it. <clears throat> yeah. I'm trying to think about myself and applying that to my day. Cause my days are pretty consistent. Um, like mornings are certainly very consistent mm. and then the rest of the day will change, but there's always like meetings. There's always screen time. There's a workout at some point there's maybe recording or filming or yeah. doing something like this. And I think with everything I talked about, we've actually did a whole podcast on productivity, but really like my threshold in the morning, I've probably got 90 minutes, mm. 90 minutes of any of my tasks I can do and have full engagement. Yeah. But as my gate, as my day goes on, like the amount, the threshold in terms of time mm. is getting less and less and less and less. Mm. Um, so like I love programming. Like I, I love, literally love programming, but the last two days, because I'm going on holiday tomorrow, I've been doing two weeks at a time mm. and, you know, writing the elite program, which is, uh, what, five, six days of training a week, yeah. two sessions every single day. Yeah. And then two back to back weeks of that. The second week engagement still high, but energy super low, like <laughs> yeah. just a complete slog getting through yeah. that. Um, and I've done that. Yeah, I've noticed that last couple of days and I, I was just thinking, I was like, wow, I haven't felt like this about programming in a really yeah. long time. Normally it's like I've got an hour and I could be super dedicated, crush really good work, move on to the next thing. Mm. Um, and I just appreciate now that, so I've been using this timer. I use it end all this app, which is like a soundscapes app. I think that's how they, what they call it. And <clears throat> so I put my Bose headphones at home or if I need to do deep work. Uh, it will, it's at work, it's ear, AirPods and I'll set a 60 minute timer. And right. then like, you know, these basic tunes will start, melodic tunes start coming into your ears. And as you get towards the end of 60 minutes, the like the volume ramps up. <laughs> so you know what's fucking funny <laughs> is that when I'm doing it and I hear that volume start ramping, so it'll be like, doom, 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 and then it'll just go. Mm. Do you start rushing your work? Yeah, <laughs> I literally start panicking. When I hear that, when I hear that increase in volume, I know the end's coming. I'm just like, Whoa! I'm like just <laughs> slamming out those last words as much as I can. It's so funny. I actually like have anxiety around that noise Seems now. Like it's crazy. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> totally recommend it to everyone. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, the idea being is like, I don't force myself yeah. to go over 60 because when I force myself to go over 60, maybe 90 minutes is more of a threshold. Mm. I know I can do it. Mm. but the consequence to everything else in a day that's where it's it's not it's not worth it yeah so i can you can do it in the moment but it's like the knock-on effect of what that's going to do to everything else in my day it's actually not worth it so mm. even if i'm feeling great 60 minutes 90 minutes tops get up move disconnect yeah try and like look out at nature if i'm at home like look yeah. out the window and just stare mm. if i'm here just step out of the gym like i'll just stop what i'm doing go outside do a lap or two just look at the water, maybe sit there for two minutes, come back in. And I'm just like, that little recharge allows me to it bump up it again, bump it up again. Such a difference <clears throat> to have that. I know for me, because of learning that thing through the activities list that I did when I've been walking to work, my rule now is like, it can be at the back end or the front end because it takes me an hour to walk into work. So it can be at the back end or the front end, but no phone for 30 minutes at that. Mm. Like nothing. Like yeah. I can have sound but if i have sound i like the sound of nature as well so it'll be like lo-fi beats and then sound of nature and i'm like this is perfect yeah. but yeah like no whatsapp messages no nothing like that if it was anything i'm listening to an audio book and i'm like writing a quick note like i'm okay yeah. with that but trying to i guess have a bit more of like a digital detox in a way and it makes yeah. me feel not necessarily from social media just like my phone in general, in general it just yeah allows me to step into the day feeling recharged rather than getting here feeling like a little bit mentally fatigued. Yeah. So I, I start every single day with no phones or screens the first mm. hour. It's more like 45 minutes. Yeah. It started at 15 and then it put, I pushed it to 30 so, and now it's really about 45. Yeah. But what's crazy is if I pick my phone up once. So for example, on Monday we had a typhoon. Mm. Um, and when we have typhoons here, we have to close the gym. So we were kind of, we went all went to bed on Sunday night because we actually got together as a team on Sunday mm. and said, okay, right. Liam was taking the 515 class. Liam, you have to wake up at basically 315. Sucker. Yeah. You got two hours before <laughs> class. If it's up, you got to cancel. And so naturally I went to bed thinking about the typhoon. Yeah. Uh, so when I woke up, I think I set my alarm about 545, but I woke up before that. I was like, I need to check what's happening with this typhoon. So mm. straight away breaking the habit that I normally do, which is no phones. Um, until 45 minutes after waking within a minute of waking i was on my phone looking at the observatory mm. and then sending messages to the group and the the knock-on effect that that had in my morning it was like 
I was just then looking for my phone nonstop. Yes. So like I would be sit, I'd cook, be cooking breakfast and I'd see my phone on the counter because I was like looking at it in the kitchen mm. and I would just have this urge to want to reach for it and grab it. Yeah. And I actually did a couple of times grab it and I would like be like, what are you doing? Like, put your phone away. Mm. Then I go out to breakfast and then I had to physically move my phone off the table yeah. to the like to the bench that I with that out of reach yeah. to stop me picking it up. And I was like, wow, that is just how nuts is that? Yeah. Right. That one pickup and that one message has like Changed created this everything. addiction to wanting to constantly look at it. Yeah. Well, I think it's like Again, this book is great, guys. But uh, one of I'm the things, read, I'm actually going to read it on holiday. Yeah, one of one of the titles or one of I guess the chapters, sorry, is about presence, and it speaks about how, you know, obviously our phones and all those sorts of things are created by people who are literally like understand behavior, like mm. they know what they're designing is made to be almost irresistible, and it speaks about how we almost have this like era of digital relevance where it's like you place a lot of your worth on the way that you're getting messages or if you're getting likes or if someone's replying to something, whatever it is, like that's what happens, but also how it's like digital distraction as well. And it was speaking about, and I, the segue to this will be habits, but it was speaking about how, even if you have the best intentions and you know, you have your phone there and it's off and it's next to you, the fact that it's there and you know that you can just turn it on and go onto it yeah. is so much worse than if you would have just actually put it out of sight, out of mind. So the reason I liked that is obviously a lot of the work that I do here is helping people to change their habits and helping them to implement good things into their life. And the whole thing about habits, which are automated behaviors, like we don't have to think about them, it just happens, is that they can be good or they can be bad. Like they don't have to be, you know, one or the other. Yeah. And they're both created because it's easy. So naturally to break a habit we need to make something hard so i know you know for example for me at work i will always turn my um wi-fi off and then i'll choose on my mobile data to turn things like instagram and facebook off so that if i have the temptation and i want to go onto those things it's an extra step like i have to think about having to do that um so yeah it's cool to see how we can change our habits with little things is what I'm trying to say. I mean, <clears throat> you could have opened up a tin of worms. I, I, was like, <laughs> I literally was like, I'm not going to do shit. it. We go down the conversation of how to create habits because I want to get involved in this, but maybe we'll save that. For another another time. Yeah, another time. Stay tuned, guys. <clears throat> Stay tuned. Um, well, yeah, thanks for sharing all the all the things that have been going on in your life and sharing, okay. sharing so openly. Yeah, like um, I said, when you said, what are the things from your backstage that you're not bringing forward? I was like, oh, I don't know. I wish that I ha I don't wish that I had more, but I was just like, maybe I don't see that I have more. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I guess a, a question that I have in the practical application of what you did in terms of tracking those two weeks mm -hmm. and looking at energy um, and what's the other one? Energy, engagement. Engagement. Mm -hmm. What did you then do? So when you notice you had two weeks of data, yeah. you're starting to see what's draining your energy, what's not, what's, yep. what's like low engagement. Yep. Um, what do you then do? Right. So more recently, I guess, just because <clears throat> of the nature of what I've been experiencing, I understand that there are days that are just going to be better and there are going to mm. be days that are worse. So what I've done with that now is it's kind of built a database to be like, all right, how am I feeling today? So I have like a little check-in with myself and I'm like, am I feeling like my sleep was actually sleep? That's like the first thing, right? Like have I woken up feeling energized rather than like lethargic and tired? Um, how are my thoughts today? Because obviously we know when we're a little bit more tired, well, for me, when I'm a little bit more tired, perhaps it's harder to think as positively. Um, it's much more of an effort to be conscious about creating positive mind uh, or chatter. So I think just based on where I am on any given day, it then has given me the tools and the resources to be like, okay, out of the things that I need to get done that are in my jar, my big rocks, which ones right now can I put into my day? And at what points can I put them into my day so that I can drain a little bit of energy, but then fill it up a little bit more and then drain a little bit of energy and fill it up more. Because I think before I wasn't so conscious about it, I would have all these things which I was super engaged in, but they were also super draining. Mm. And then I had nothing to give. <clears throat> so yeah, I think it's just allowed me to gain a little bit more perspective of how to pace myself i think the revelation literally the revelation that i had before i came in here was like life is about learning to pace yourself we speak about 
keeping reps in reserve for training. So keep rep, reps in reserve on your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And that's what I told myself to do. Yeah. And then, but also knowing that sometimes you need to deload and then yes. sometimes you need to test. Exactly. Exactly. It's a constant ever changing thing, which is what's so cool, but sucks at the same so time. Hard. It's just like, you're constantly learning these new skills and having these new tools to apply. And sometimes you don't need them. And sometimes you really do, but sometimes you need yeah. to make modifications to them. But that's what's cool because I guess that's the reason why in an instance like this situation that I'm in, I've been able to bounce back from it because I had the tools and resources from all the years of having to try mm. to build it. Yeah. I mean, just going back to the whole idea <clears throat> of like reps and reserve pushing yeah. when pull back. Yeah. I think this is where routine is so powerful. Mm. You know, when you know, you can kind of look at a week and know pretty much what you have every day and you mm. can kind of forecast immediately what, which are going to be your tough days, which are going to be your easier days. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, in the moment, we talked about this nutrition, right? Yeah. When you're, when you're trying to navigate nutrition on something like a holiday, you're constantly evaluating like what's happened, where you are now and what, mm. what you have coming up. Mm. And you're just trying to find that balance as much as you can. Yeah. And I'm, I do that in my everyday work week. It's like, okay, today, hectic day back to back to back to back things but i do know that tomorrow i'm going to have a couple of hours free where i can maybe recharge a little bit and then i'm going on holiday which is going to mean x y and z so you know when you have that consistency in your week you can i think more you're just a lot more adaptable and flexible in the moment to know yeah. uh, what what needs to be given now and today because of what what you, what you know is coming up in the, in the next few days Does that make sense totally i think you know everything you're saying is self-regulation mm. i think it's your ability to self-regulate and your ability to be consistent we speak about it so often with like the athlete that ends on top is the person who's able to show up consistently and it's like we can do it for so many things in our life that aren't ourselves but if we can show up consistently for ourselves, then we just create a life that is a lot easier and feels better. Um, yeah, I really like the concept of that. Yeah. Like walk slowly, but never backwards kind of thing. And also be aware of your surroundings and be aware of like where you can push and where you can pull back. Yeah. If you, if you test all the time, you're going to be fucked. Yeah. If you're deloading all the time, you're maybe not doing enough to progress. Exactly. If you're leaving two reps in reserve every day, then you're probably going to adapt to not be fucked at the end of it yeah well it's like avoiding burnout that's yeah. the whole thing we're trying to avoid burnout with whatever regard that is like going too fast and hard in a relationship going you know too hard into a new role that you've been given at work maybe it's too hard on your training maybe it's too hard on your studies like how can you find a point where your average or mean over a week or a month or a year is slightly better because that's all we're trying to do i love it tam on that note it's been an absolute pleasure having you back on Wow. Do we keep the short and sweet for once? Mm, pretty short. Oh. Pretty short. Time always flies. Oh, it does. Not that short, to be <laughs> I honest. I it's literally been like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but thank you. I think the objective today was to kind of catch up with you and where you're at and to share some of your revelations. And mm. I think you provided some really cool tools as well. Uh, certainly for me, I love the idea of the, the energy um, versus... I love it so much. <laughs> I can't even remember. So what is it? Engagement, Engagement. and energy. I'm trying to think of the other word. I know it's an E, engagement energy. And I'm going to think about that a lot more in my own life now as well. So um, yeah, thank you very much for sharing. Thank, thank you for your time. Me. No worries.